Hello and welcome to Happiest Health webinar series as part of Mind Matters Summit 2023. I am Kumaran and I will be your host for today's session on mental health conversations and why it matters. Mental health includes our emotional, psychological and social well-being. It affects how we think, feel and act. It also helps determine how we handle stress related to others and make healthy choices. Mental health is a major factor in a healthy lifestyle when we make difficult choices, deal with stress and relate to other people in our world. Yet, mental health isn't just about something we can deal with once and again and then get over it. It's important in every stage of our life, from infancy all the way into adulthood, mental health is something we need to be cognizant of and handle with care. Happiest Health is organizing its yet another exciting session on mental health theme and the summit is called Mind Matters on December 9th at Nimhans Convention Center, Bengaluru from 9am. To know more about the summit, please log on to www.happiesthealth.com and register now for the summit. To discuss more of this, and we have um, a conversation on mental health, we have with us a distinguished guest, Miss Neha Kadabam, psychologist and executive director of Kadabam's group. Our unwavering dedication and passion lie in preventative and promotive mental health, making her a renowned figure in India's mental wellness space. Nia's extensive knowledge encompasses a wide spectrum of mental health concerns including stress, management, depression, anxiety and various other disorders. With her ability to effectively communicate in English, Hindi, Gujarati and many more languages, she is spread out across the country and the borders. One of Neha's areas of specialization is working with youngsters where her empathy and sensitivity shine. Her arsenal of therapeutic methodologies includes counseling, psychotherapy techniques such as cognitive behavioral therapy, mindfulness, and many more. On this note, we welcome you, Ms. Neha. Thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Neha, so to begin with our conversation on mental health and why it matters, I yeah. think uh, you should start uh, telling us or uh, telling us the viewers about how often ignored topic is mental health. Right. Uh, before that, I think uh, I'd like to thank Happiest Health for having me here. It's a pleasure for me to be a part of the Mind Matters Summit 2023. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> right. So coming back to your question, uh, where you were talking about an ignored topic, I think uh, I can't agree more. It's definitely um, uh, mental health has been ignored to a great extent. Um, you know, when it comes to mental health issues, um, I think people try and push it to the last minute only when things really go out of control, you know, uh, that's when people reach out to mental health professionals. Until then, they feel they can figure it out on their own, manage on their own. You know, unlike your physical health condition, um, many, many people um, ensure that they go for regular physical health checkups to check if their sugar levels, their blood pressure, their cholesterol, everything's in check. But when it comes to mental health, I think, uh, forget about going for a regular checkup, even when there is an issue. I think it takes a lot of courage and a lot of time uh, for people to reach out to a mental health professional. Uh, I think one of the reasons, uh, if I have to attribute why it's ignored, um, I think I would, one of the primary reasons I would say is lack of awareness, you know. Um, people don't sometimes know that um, reaching out to a professional is okay and it helps for issues, you know, some of them just normalize that, oh, stress at workplace is common or, you know, having uh, someone self-talk, you know, in, in, a, in a way is is okay. So, you know, there's lack of awareness that, oh, there are issues like this and it's an illness, you know, for example, like um, forgetfulness in as with aging. It's again normalized that, oh, it's a normal part of aging. You know, it can't be dementia or anything. There's nothing like that. So I think one great part 
is lack of awareness itself. And the second would be stigma. Okay. Uh, even now when we see clients um, and, you know, they reach out and it's their first time. Okay. Uh, it's very interesting to say, you know, their conversation starts off like this. So actually I'm normal, but, you know, the whole idea that, oh, if I'm reaching out to a mental health professional, it's like, I'm mad or something's wrong with me or I'm crazy, you know. Um, I think that is, um, so the stigma that is attached that if you're reaching out to a mental health professional, there's something wrong with you. It cannot be uh, okay, you know. Uh, and I think another main reason probably for all of this is mental health issues are unseen wounds, you know, un un unlike your physical health, you can see. Right, you can right, see right. issues, you can see concerns, you can see symptoms. Absolutely. Sometimes mental health issues, uh, symptoms are not visible. And I think that um, can be another reason why it's ignored. Right. Okay. Um, uh, to move on to my uh, next question that mm -hmm. I would um, ask you is about in your practice, uh, what are the most common issues that you attend to? Of course, you have highlighted few of it now, but uh, there there would be stark um, uh, issues that you would come up to. Yeah. So in my practice, I mostly see children, adolescents, and young adults. So if I have to sort of break it down age wise, I think when it comes to children, um, um, lately I've been seeing a lot of separation anxiety, sitting tolerance, not able to concentrate, behavioral issues. Um, neurodivergent children, learning disability. Um, I think when I see children, it automatically parents also become uh, uh, people who I need to see. So parenting related issues, I don't know how to raise my child or I don't know if I'm doing the right thing or how do I help my child with this. So parenting related concerns also I see quite commonly. When it comes to adolescents and adults, um, I've seen a drastic increase in terms of the cases of people with anxiety and panic attacks, uh, depression, uh, sleep-related issues, uh, loneliness. You know, it doesn't rip, it, they don't come seeing loneliness as a concern, but loneliness is again something that I have seen um, increase a lot. Self-harm concerns, uh, especially among adolescents, have also have seen increased stress not able to manage stress, burnout, those kind of issues. And I think overall, uh, I think for children, it comes out directly is excessive use of screen time. Okay. Uh, for the older people, they don't come with that as a concern. But yes, uh, excessive screen time, gadget use, gaming, excessive gaming, all of those would be the okay. kind of Right, right. Uh, uh, also, when we're talking about uh, the most common issues that you're attending to, uh, this it's also about something about opening up because uh, be it your clients uh, and individuals who want to come and come into your clinic. So yeah. when it comes to opening up, yeah. what are the biggest challenges that you come across? Uh, when it comes to opening up, I think uh, one of the main concerns uh, if I have to say the first main reason is sometimes people think that is this even going to help me? I think, again, I'd like to attribute this to lack of awareness. Right, right. Um, that, you know, people think that oh, going to a psychologist, talking to someone, will it actually help me? Um, it's a stranger and I'm going to tell them about my thoughts, my feelings, my life experiences. Mm, one, is it going to be safe? Because, you know, I'm giving my personal details there. Yeah. And how will it actually help me? So, you know, when it comes to probably visiting a restaurant or visiting, visiting, visiting to another doctor in another hospital, I think a lot more people talk about it. All right. Or right. to this doctor, he's really good. You should meet him sometime, you know. Uh, or, you know, even be it restaurant, people talk about it. But when it comes to meeting a counselor, you know, they don't talk about it. Um, so, I mean, of course, a lot of our clients come uh, uh, through word of mouth saying, oh, oh, you've met this person. So, OK, then I think I will go try them. So, you know, this uh, again, this stigma attached. So people are not very vocal about, uh, oh, I should 
um, uh, tell others also about it. You know, if I tell others I'm going and meeting this counselor or psychologist, what are they going to say? They're going to say, oh, there's something wrong with you. Why do you need a psychologist? Again, would be fear of judgment, both from people and if my psychologist will judge me, that how can someone think like this or behave like this? That's another fear that people have. Another thing that I have seen is lack of self-awareness. You know, people don't spend a lot of time introspecting. I'm a great advocator of um, use of journals. Uh, when you journal, it helps you become a lot more aware about who you are and what you are. Um, so when there's lack of awareness and when I'm in therapy, when I'm seeing a psychologist, I am um, like an onion. I'm opening up or like a flower. I'm, I'm really opening up my issues and my concerns. And it, when I'm opening up, of course, I don't think it's a very comfortable feeling because you're unearthing all the issues that you've been burying under. <laughs> so they are coming up so then people at that time feel very very overwhelmed and then you know they feel I don't know if this is going to help it's a change um, and sometimes you know they go meet one psychologist and they feel oh it's not working out so I'm never going to meet one again it's just like a doctor sometimes it's important for your uh, your mindset the psychologist's mindset for your wavelength to match your ideologies in a sense to match so just because one a psychologist didn't work out for you doesn't mean no one else will so it's okay for you to try out a few before you decide whom you want to con continue counseling and therapy sessions with right uh, while you mentioned ma'am about uh, maybe you are you'll you'll be judged when you go to meet a counselor or mm -hmm. maybe maybe you will you are not able to connect with the counselor that you've already gone and consulted and you don't want to go to the next counselor um, also, how does this peer pressure or what would my peers think about or is there so when you talk about self introspection and uh, individuals perception, um, I don't know, I also think maybe peer also matter for you to push you through. Maybe that's another way to open up. I don't know uh, if you could just answer that. No, absolutely. In fact, many times, you know, uh, we get calls from family members or friends saying, I know this friend of mine or this yeah, exactly. person in my family needs help, but he's not ready to come. What do I do? Okay. And we tell them that it's great that they identified and we tell them to tag along with them for the counseling sessions. Okay. Right. So, so, so that's because, possible, is it? Like you can. Absolutely. Tag okay. So it's, it's a, it's a form of social support and encouragement and making that person that we're there for you. And I'm here with you in your journey journey you're trusting that person and helping them so they can come with them to the session and um, of course we'll allow them to be there in for about a very short while and eventually get them to move out okay. when we feel that the client is comfortable or if the client says no I really want this person to be along see at the end of it what's important is the person needs help yeah and right. he gets the help that he needs right, right. so that's I think that, that's a that's a very 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 I think um, that's a very supportive statement that you say that in you can bring people along with you because I think a lot of them maybe these are the misconstructions uh, maybe one of the reasons that could be leading up to opening up uh, for people. Uh, Ma'am, having said that, uh, so so we've come a long way compared to a few years ago and now. Uh, yeah. What are the platforms available for an individual to come speak to a specialist or a like a people like like you um, right. so what are the platforms that's available for people so i think if it was a couple of years back uh, i think the only way is go in person to the hospital or the clinic book an appointment or wait long waiting hours and meet the person but now of course the options have increased there are a lot of online options where there are video consultations audio consultations chat based consultations um uh, um, I I don't know, not too familiar, but um, I don't know if we have it yet, but I think it's not too far that uh, there'll be AI, artificial intelligence okay. um, used for um, counseling and therapy as well. Okay. Uh, while I say that, uh, uh, I think one, with the scarcity of professionals we have, I think we'll be able to reach out to more people, mm -hmm. reach out to even more remote areas where probably there are no professionals in those small cities okay. or towns and villages. Um, 
but we also have to ensure it's evaluated rightly and AI is used to assist professionals rather than a you know sort of a handover to for AI to take over on that. Right. Okay. Okay. So when when you're talking about the AI, um, I, I think I have definitely have to ask you another question about technology. Uh, yeah. apart from the platforms, so yeah. because yeah. nowadays is just a click of an app, you can speak to a counselor. Mm -hmm. You don't have yeah. to walk up to um Nimhans uh, or any other uh, centers like Cadabums for that matter. Um, the availability, uh, for example, um, how has technology come in? in an ease of accessibility for people in uh, sub need need or people who need support? Um, I would say it's a mix, uh, if, if you ask okay. me. Okay. Uh -huh. I think in a great sense, I would say technology is definitely a boon. I think especially COVID yeah. has yeah. got the best out of us when it comes to making this more available online as well. Um, you know, with this, um, uh, for people to be who are not comfortable, you know. Um, so sometimes people say, um, what if I walk into a hospital and see me walk into a hospital that caters to mental health related issues? So um, I'm scared to even come in there. And what if someone sees me? So I think in that sense, it's a great boon because people can take sessions from the comfort of their own homes, right? So they can reach out to people. For people with social anxiety, again, who just even getting out of the house is very difficult. I think for them as well, seeking therapy online, I think is great. Uh, for people with physical disability, sometimes, you know, when things are not very comfortable, uh, sometimes people in postpartum depression where they have tiny infants to look after and again, stepping out or even, you know, uh, busy work schedules, no time to step out for counseling or make time because, you know, I think... Uh, in Bangalore, again, traveling, right. the traffic is quite a bit. So you have to factor in all of those. So I think in those senses, I think it's great mm -hmm. uh, because it helps, you know, working professionals and all the other people who find it difficult to make time for this. They are able to take these sessions from their homes or uh, wherever they're comfortable from. So I think it's definitely great in that sense. But uh, while online sessions is good, I would say in-person sessions are always a lot more effective. Um, I think at Kadavans also, we do get quite a few... Um, online requests? Yes, online requests. Okay. And I think this has also broken the global barrier. So we have a lot of our clients who live in the UK, US and Australia as well. You know, That's for great. them to yeah. reach out to um, a, profession, a mental health professional there, they feel culturally they will not be able to relate to them. So in that sense, they they are very comfortable to take sessions with the Indian psychologists. You know, maybe is, unbiased. Maybe that's the reason. <laughs> unbiased and even you know the family dynamics, yeah. uh, cultural uh, expectations, and those things is something that a person from India will understand better than someone from the US. Right, right, right. Or somewhere else. So I think in that sense, I think it's a great. Um, way where we are able to reach out uh, to many but of course if there is an option of going in person uh, I think I'd always suggest in person is better than right. Uh, right. online so online is also very effective mm -hmm. um, so we also have a lot of clients who come and meet us for the first few sessions in person and once that rapport is developed so you know either they're traveling or something so in such cases we continue sessions online okay Right, right. Thank you, ma'am. So that, that's that's one of the reasons why um, taking mental health a step forward and uh, talking about it. So that's the reason why Happy Yourself is organizing Mind Matters on December 9th at Niman's Convention Center. So um, uh, so to, to bring uh, um, and talk about it, because the very first session of yours itself is about um, how do we talk about it and the, how it matters to us, right? So uh, when we're talking about this, ma'am, so we talk talking about uh, uh, it, uh, how it affects your uh, mind, how it affects your family, how it affects your stress. Right. So apart from all of this, there's also physically you're drained at, at times. Uh, yeah. Physically, there are a lot of changes that happens. Um, how does one's mental health uh, affect the entire body's, uh, any, anybody's physical, physically? I think it's greatly connected. Like the famous saying says, you know, a sound body, a sound mind and a sound body. I think it's completely interrelated, uh, interrelated your mental health and your physical health. Right. Um, 
there are times uh when you know, someone says someone's feeling low right when they just do some physical activity like going for a walk or a run or fitness or something um automatically you start feeling better right uh, same thing if you're stressed or strained physically automatically your focus concentration all that dips right mm -hmm. uh, now going looking at it from the other perspective you know let's say if you're stressed right then uh, physically also you feel tired right uh, again you're not able to probably focus on things that's around right and in many sense um when you're physically unwell it has an impact on your mental state when you're mentally unwell it does impact your physical state um continued exposure to stress will also um reduce uh sorry will also impact your immune system you'll be more prone to okay. you know feeling sick and various other things so overall um if you ask me a positive psychological well-being um can also reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke you know so be it stress or any other mental health condition depression you know there is a um uh, there is a higher risk of you suffering physical health conditions you know could be increased blood pressure or you know cardiovascular diseases or others right okay thanks a lot for uh, enlightening on tadas and uh, at by closing this entire session ma'am uh, i just also wanted to uh, understand what are the positives of reaching out to an expert in time um apart from all of the ill effects negative effects or what what do i say as uh, other effects of it uh, mm -hmm. but what are the positives outcomes uh, that you see or any case studies uh, possible positive case studies that you you have come across if you could share us sure absolutely um so i think um an early identification of any problem again i think i want to relate this to the physical health mm -hmm. people go for regular checkups to ensure to check if their cholesterol or sugar levels are in borderline or is it high right mm -hmm. so on similar lines i think an early i mean of course that is done because the moment it's identified early the treatment can start early and if the treatment starts early there's better man better way that you can manage it there's a better control on it etc right on similar way when it comes to mental health issues um, an early identification of a problem issue or an illness i think will have a better prognosis uh, when i say better prognosis is uh, the treatment will be more effective the intervention that is provided will be more effective um, um, so early identification uh, may not be able to cure we may able to delay the whole illness okay. so delay for a problem to become an issue and an issue to become an illness we mm -hmm. will be able to delay and if we're already there probably we'll be able to manage it better um uh, case study if i have to say um we work a lot with schools colleges and corporates okay. where we start having these conversations of um um daily life issues concerns and experiences very early again the whole objective of doing this is so that um we're able to delay or uh, prevent and avoid from problem becoming an issue issue becoming an illness right so now for example um as we are growing up i think many of us have gone through um bullying in yes. for example and some bullying experiences can be very very traumatizing i think we've even seen that in movies mm. and th that trauma can have a long term impact on us right whereas if that is identified early at school for example and if you're able to identify it early and help them heal and overcome those issues and equip them with better ways of how they could deal with the bully etc i think automatically helps them to you know cope with it better and take things forward better uh apart from that various other life experiences that probably lead to depression anxiety um even when it comes to working population prolonged exposure to stress increases um risk of physical health conditions and various others as well so while they're working and if they're able to reach out to us and when they reach out to us we have seen that you know um you know like we say stress you may not be able to avoid the stress 
but we equip you better with yeah. uh, resilience and coping strategies so that you're able to deal with it better. Deal with that okay. okay. So that sort of mental fitness and resilience building um, can be done at an early stage and that definitely has a positive outcome on reaching out early. Thank you once again, Ms. Neha Kadabam. Um, group director of Cadabam's group. And this brings us to a very conclusive uh, or a, what do I say as a first step for our Mind Matters Summit. Um, viewers who are watching this entire episode of Mind Matters, Mental Health Conversation and Why It Matters, please join us at the a Mind Matters Summit on December 9th at Nimhan's Convention Center, Bengaluru, which starts at 9 a.m. To know more about this and register yourselves, please uh, log on to www.happiesthealth.com. Thank you.